Hello, it's Weekend Handicapper from WeekendHandicapper.com. In this video, we are going to decipher and analyze a particular race that had a massive payout to the Superfecta wager. And that race occurred on Derby Day 2021, so that was May 1st, 2021, and it was race number 10, the Churchill Downs Stakes at Churchill Downs. This video will show you how you can win over $100,000 betting on horses. This is rare. This is rare. Don't get too excited like this happens all the time, but we don't need it to happen all the time. We just need it to happen once. Now, in full disclosure, this didn't happen to me, uh, but there's some lucky individual out there that that put all the pieces together and, and got this monster payoff which i'm getting ready to show you here and hopefully through the result of analyzing races like this you could put yourself in position i know i'm trying to to land a monster payout like this just because this happened once doesn't mean it can't happen again and it doesn't certainly doesn't mean it can't happen to you in the future if we get lucky, above all, we have to get lucky to get a something like these kind of payoffs. But I think if we decipher this race, we look for clues, we, we think about how to strategize our wagers and how to uh, put particular odds horses together, you might put yourself in a position to have a life-changing score, and this is certainly... Uh, life-changing score so let's get with it Churchill Downs website if you're not familiar with it or you don't visit their their website too often they do a really good job of, I know Churchill Downs and CDI gets a lot of criticism and and uh, has its naysayers but their website their website is really good in terms of racing so we go up here to racing and wagering so you click on that and what they do is every day they put their races with the entries and the, you know, the different horses in there and their morning line odds. And these are the different races. But I'm not sure many people know this, but you could click on the date here. And any day that Churchill Downs has live racing at their track, you can find it and look at that particular day's results and watch the video so in this case we want to pick derby day may 1st 2021 here's all the races that occurred there's the derby and if you wanted to you can watch the video right so any race that raced at churchill downs you can access this now for the purposes of this video we are going to look at race number 10 the churchill down stakes there's the payoffs Okay, so that's no problem. You might notice this big long shot here that came in second, but it, most people that follow horse racing know the name of Whitmore or, and even Flagstaff. But if we scroll down here, we're going to see something very unusual. This Superfecta payout. $405,000. Amazing. Amazing. You hardly ever see that. Even on the Kentucky Derby, you don't see a super fact to pay out like that. So what is what, what happened for this to occur? Such a huge payout. When I first saw this, I was watching it live, the race live, and I was like, oh, wow, that was an exciting finish. That was a heck of a race. And then they showed the payouts. I thought it was a typo. I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought somebody added a couple digits in there or something. For a dollar super effect, they're four hundred and five thousand dollars. So let's figure out why it paid so much. What what things happen for that kind of payout to occur? Because if you see it, the win, I mean, it's a nine to two shot that won the race, and you have Whitmore, which was you know five to one, I think. So two of your three, two of the top three finishers. Are logical horses now this one yeah and that's one of the keys which we'll talk about now i'm not going to watch the race i'm not going to play this race in the video but if you ever want to see it i'll put the link in the description below so you can watch the uh 
the replay of the race, and he just simply hit play. Like I said, Churchill Downs, they get some criticism, but this website is nice if you play Churchill Downs a lot and you want to watch any replay for free. I remember staying up like at 11, 30, 12 at night having to watch replays or recording it on a VHS cassette tape, the, the replay. This day and age, I can get on here and go to any race on any day that Churchill raced and watch the replays for free. It's amazing. God bless America. All right, so let's go in, dwell deeper into this race. And one of the ways we can do it, yeah, you could watch the replay, of course, but let's look at the chart. So one of the best ways that you can go about deciphering a race, see what happened, see the, see the details, the fine details of a race is, well, one of them is replay. So watch the replay if you need to. You get, gain a lot of information that way. But also through Equibase charts. And a good resource to use is what's called historical charts. You simply go to Equibase.com, search for historical charts, Pretty much any track, any race in North America that was run, you're going to find a, a chart for it, a race chart. This particular example, for the purposes of, of this video, we're going to look at Derby Day, May 1st, 2021. And we're going to click on that. Then it brings up the full card. In this particular instance, we want race number 10. Now, I like to download it as Adobe Acrobat. And so you get that PDF. It looks visually looks better, and I can navigate it better. So this is the race chart. It shows you the order of finish. There was a field of 12 horses. One of them was scratched. That's why you might be like, hey, hold on. There it says 13 there. Well, one of them was scratched. So it was a field of 12, and it occurred on May 1st, race 10. And that's the details there. The for who it was for the class level, how far they were running, seven furlongs on the dirt, so on and so forth. But here's what we want to look at. We want to look at who won, who came in second, who came in third, and who came in fourth, and what their odds were, were and that's this is where we find that information. So think about this. Now, there's no... <laughs> Look, all this is in hindsight, and I no nobody's promising you're going to make this kind of a score on a race. But when I see this, I see that it's very gettable. Now, granted, your two longest shots finished second and fourth. The longest shot on the board finished second, which you might be like, well, yeah, duh, that's why I paid so much. That's right. That's right. But that doesn't mean it's impossible to put a long shot at that number in second position. The first place finisher, Flagstaff, 9-2. to two. That's a gettable horse. That, and we're going to look at each one of these horses that finished in the top four, their past performances here in just a little bit. But there, that's that, – there's you don't have to – it's not a head-scratcher that Flagstaff won, and certainly not a head-scratcher that Whitmore came in fourth, or third, excuse me. Now, what will take some imagination, some creativity, is trying to come up with that 13 horse in the second spot and Hog Creek Hustles in the fourth spot. But two of the four horses had logical odds. I mean, Flagstaff was almost a favorite. You know, that's one of the reasons I think it paid a lot is because Tap It to Win, which was the favorite, and you know that by this little asterisk here when you're looking at the Equibase charts. It finished second. The last finished out of the money. So anytime you get a favorite out of the money in his Axis Trifecta Superfecta, it's going to pay, usually. Um, and so let's, let's scroll down here and just admire this thing of beauty. <laughs> Again, 405000 for the super factor. Now, here's something interesting. This is this is um, this is. <laughs> hopefully, I can meet this person one day. Uh, who knows if I get a hold of him uh, or contact him? I should say get a hold of him. Sound like it's violent. If I 
maybe I'll somehow do a video with them or something if they want to be known. Now, if I want that much money, I don't know if I w would want to be telling people about it, honestly. I'd be lurking in the shadows and uh, living a pretty good life. But, man, think. Uh, leave me a comment below. What would you do with $405,000? What? It's going to change your life, hopefully for the better, even though some lottery winners that win millions of dollars, their life turns to crap after winning that, which astounds me. But $405,000, what would you do? What would be the first thing that you would do or a couple things you would do if you were able to win $405,000 on a horse trade? I know I'd be chilling out, doing uh, traveling a lot, buy my mama some whatever she wanted, and and uh, my father too, take him fishing. But anyway, let's get back to this. Four hundred five thousand dollars was the payout. Now look at this. The pool was only five hundred. Well, only it's it's five hundred and twenty one thousand dollars. So that means. I'm I'm pretty certain one person, there was one winning ticket that had this combination of the four, thirteen, nine, and eleven, because the pool you, they minus they t they have a takeout. So Churchill Downs I think is around twenty two percent takeout for Super Factus. So you take that percentage for Churchill Downs the track takeout they call it takes a cut of the five hundred twenty one thousand dollars. And that leaves one lucky individual with that money. I'm pretty sure it was just one person that, and here's the key thing to rem remember in horse race. It's called scooping the pool. One person scooped the whole entire pool. There was only one, one winning ticket. And and it paid some lucky individual $405,000 in a race, in hindsight, in hindsight, that you can make a case for. And we're getting ready to try to make a case for in hindsight. Bear with me, folks. Now, before we get going, looking at the past performances, here is the running lines. And as you see, this is how close it was. And you'll see that on the, the replay, too. Look, I mean, it was a blanket finish. I mean, it was it was an exciting race. And Flagstaff staff barely won by a head. All, all these top three horses r were right there. And Hog Creek Hustle, the fourth-place finisher, wasn't too far behind. So it was just a really exciting race. And it could have went any, anyway, anywhere, I should say. It, that's how close it was. Whitmore had a heck of a shot at winning. So did Lexus only. And it was this amazing race. So it's not like this was a clear-cut. Uh, Flagstaff was a clear-cut winner. But I do want to note this down here. Here was your favorite, tap it to win, and get it to get the prize. If you notice, these horses went out to the early lead, so there there was a lot of pace up front. And the and as you see in the video, Flagstaff was right up there as well. But jockey Luis Saez, which is another reason I think uh this this race was very gettable, or at least the winner was. Uh, John Sadler, the trainer, and Luis Saez, the jockeys. Luis Saez did a pretty smart thing. I think he sensed that early pace because he was right up there. There was a bunch of horses right up there on the early lead. But he eventually raided back a little bit and let those other ones go. And that was smart because, as you see, that pace got to him. And they finished last and second to last because that early pace was um, – pretty hot all right so a couple things before we move away from this chart the pool was this amount five hundred twenty one thousand dollars looks like one person was the winner one loan ticket scooped the pool because nobody else had this combination very competitive race that could have went in multitude of ways but for that one lucky individual this this finish four thirteen nine and eleven Proved to be life changing, I would imagine. All right, so now let's look at each of these horses. So now we want to look at each of the horses that finished in the top four as part of the Superfecta and try to see if we can make a case for these horses on why they finished where they did. 
So this is what I'm looking at is the Brisnet Ultimate past performances with comments. I'm not endorsed by Brisnet or anything, but free is my favorite four-letter word, and you get free. I, I'm not about to rate betting on horses is expensive enough. I don't want to be paying for data and paying for past performances. So I do really well <laughs> with free past performances. Uh, so, and yeah, enough of that. But if you want free stuff, go ahead and, and you could get free past performances if you bet like on Twin Spires or Keeneland Select got common. Probably other ABW wagers have free past performance. Hopefully they do. Race number 10, seven furlongs, Churchill Downs. Um, and now let's go down and let's look at each of these horses here. If we go down to the winner, Flagstaff, what we're going to see is John Sadler, the trainer. Good trainer, especially in greatest stakes. Positive ROI. Luis Saez, good jockey, really good jockey. Uh, Belmont winning jockey. Uh, Kentucky Derby winning jockey for like 20 minutes. But that's a great combination. That shouldn't be the main reason you bet on Flagstaff. But here are some good angles that you can understand why Flagstaff won. He has been working out well. Look at all these black bullets right there. He's in good form, good shape. He's probably ready to roll. Remember, this race was for seven furlongs. Well, Flagstaff had just ran seven furlongs at Keeneland on April 3rd, and it won. So it won at today's distance. So it's a distance specialist. So that's one way you could kind of see that. But if you go up here to this, it shows you how well a horse has fared at today's distance, which is seven furlongs. So Flagstaff has raced at this distance five times. Look at this, folks. Three out of five times the horse has won at seven furlongs. Horse and it came in second the other one other time. So the horse obviously loves this distance. We call it a distance specialist. So if you look through here, seven furlongs, finished first, back here at Del Mar, finished second, only half a length behind the winning horse. Then the race before that race at Del Mar, seven furlongs at Santa Anita, came in fourth, which for super effective purposes was still – be all right but down here at Santa Anita first down here at Santa Anita on November 1st 2019 going way back first by nose so the horse loves seven furlongs so you got a good jockey good trainer a horse that loves today's distance been working out well makes a lot of sense now let's go to the second place finisher which is the long shot now, I'm curious to see if we can find anything to make a case for the number 13, Lexitonia. Okay, so the 13, Lexitonia. Let's look, see if we can get any positives or make a case for this huge long shot. Now, all his other races, you see the odds here, it hadn't always been a long shot. Yeah, there has been a few times, four or five times, six there. But here recently, he's been – Lower odds horse, a lower odds horse. And let's look to see how well this horse is d done at seven furlongs. So he's won, if you're, again, look over here. So race six times, and it's won twice at seven furlongs. Now, the other times it didn't, didn't finish in the money. But we can look through here at Laurel, way back when. Seven furlongs, one by neck. Go up here, seven furlongs at Churchill, one. All right, so now we got two angles. We got horse for or the distance is one twice at seven furlongs. Now, granted, different class levels, but we're just trying to make a case for this big long shot that was, what was it, 47 to one or something, 46 to one. So horse – for course angle, which it won at Churchill at today's distance. You don't need much other things to go by 
or many more positives to take a shot on a 46 to 1 long shot. At least include them in your Zaxxas trifectas and super factors. So the horse likes seven furlongs. It's won twice at seven furlongs, and one of those victories was at Churchill Downs. So at 46 to 1, I can't fault anybody for including that horse in their exotic wagers. But on the negative side, which I certainly understand why somebody wouldn't include this horse, look at the declining speed figures or even the where it finished. So it, you see early on in its career, first, third, there's another third, there's a win, second, but here recently, fifth, ninth, fourth. So I can understand why people might be a little hesitant to bet that horse. Um, you know, even the competition, it got beat by weaker competition that it faced on May 1st. And so I can understand why people wouldn't be betting that horse. But I can understand taking a shot and including that horse to to finish in the top four. So, all right, so now let's go to Whitmore. I won't spend much time on Whitmore because fan favorite, the horse, the veteran's been around forever, it seems like, and he brings it every single time. Uh, now, I think Whitmore gets over bet all the time. He's a gr really good horse, a consistent horse, but – People, especially on Twitter, I just love when Whitmore races. Everybody, especially at Oakland Park, everybody gets all excited. Oh, Whitmore, take, and sh you know, showing pictures of Whitmore, like w walking on the track and all that. Well, that kind of semi-mania kind of hype kind of stuff is great for handicappers because I would look for other horses because Whitmore is going to get over bet a lot because he is such a fan favorite that he is – People respecting, loving. Hey, look, I, I admire a horse like that. The horse tries every single time. So that is why this horse would be good in your exactas. Look at that. Second, second, first, 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 second. I mean, he's a great horse. I mean, gosh, he, he won the Breeders' Cup sprint at nice odds, by the way. But other than that, he hadn't been too good, uh, too high of uh, odds. How does he do at seven furlongs? Well, we look up there. Raced there that distance five times, won once, and came in second once. So there's no shame in that. How's he doing at Churchill? He's won once, came in second once. So that makes a lot of sense. That's a no-brainer. Now, I think if Whitmore had finished second behind Flagstaff, you're going to have a whole different, different payout. Or Whitmore won, came in first. Those Superfecta payouts – nowhere near the payout that you got on this particular day, the 400 some thousand. And that's because more combinations would have had Whitmore in the first position or second position because it's a common, you know, people that follow horse racing will include Whitmore, either from a fan perspective or they think the horse is going to finish first and second, which absolutely, he's Whitmore. But the – I want y'all to kind of think about the strategy behind this. There's and uh, now, granted, it was so close. Whitmore was only a head away from being second, and that payout could have been a lot different. But think about the strategy of maybe spreading in the second position and try and cast that net wide and try to get a long shot instead of horses like Whitmore, and that's how you get yourself in a position to scoop the pool, having that. 13 horse in the second position instead of a horse like Whitmore. All right, one more horse, and that's Hog Creek Crustle. Love the name. Been a, watching Hog Creek for for a while now. He always brings it, always consistent, as you see by the running lines here. Finishes. He's always up there. He's a closer. This race set up well for a closer because that some of that early pace up front. So uh, there's no shocker that Hog Creek Crustle got into the superfecta. So let's dwell a little deeper in Hawk Creek Hustle. You got the horse for course angle here at Churchill Downs. Raced six times at Churchill, and he's only been out of the money once. He's won twice, came in second three times, 
and the, you can look through these running lines. So he won at a mile at Churchill. Let's see, seven furlongs, which is today's distance. Second, se uh, there's another Churchill down, seven furlongs, came in second again. So from a finishing perspective, it makes sense to include a horse like Hog Creek Hustle. And, and by the way, Hog Creek Hustle was 31-1, to 1, a long shot. What happens is on Derby Day, which makes sense, look, I didn't cash anything on this race, so I, I don't want to come across like the all-knowing one in hindsight. But it's a, it's a question of did has Hog Creek Hustle faced this kind of competition, this kind of class level? And I think that's where some things get lost. People focus on the class, big-name horses, or horses that have been ru racing in – uh, tough competition, but the pace played into Hawk Creek Hustle finishing where it did, I think, you, but I would never discredit a horse that's always consistent at 30 to 31 to 1. Be different if Hawk Creek Hustle was 3 to 1, 4 to 1 facing tougher competition, and you didn't think the pace scenario set up well for you, you didn't think his speed figures were competitive, makes sense, but you, you got to it, – it's always this thing. I say this in my videos all the time. You're trying to balance being right in things that your logical mind is saying is probably going to happen. But don't discredit things that are offering huge odds in, in these huge scenarios. What if this happens? What, what could happen if Hog Creek Hustle gets a fast pace? The horse has always been – competitive at 30 to 1 I, if you don't think it's going to win or finish in the top two well there's no reason at 30 to 1 not to include him in like especially third or fourth you know so you always got to balance your logical mind with thinking about odds and strategies and trying to come up with tickets that others don't have and that, that's exactly what happened here at this race all right, so let's recap this real quick. I know this has been a long video, but who knows? You t you taking the time of w watching however long this video ends up being, it might end up changing your life. You might get this in your bank account. Who knows? So let's recap. First thing we want to focus on is field size. If you play super effective, the bigger the field, the better the better the payouts. This was a field of 12, ideal for a Superfecta race. Another thing to consider, the favorite was 3-1. to one. A mild favorite, not a heavy favorite. Another reason to play this race, a Superfecta in this race. You had nice odds scattered throughout those 12 horses. No clear cut. You had a favorite, but it wasn't a heavy favorite. And what's more, the second favorite second lowest odds horse won the race and they paid four hundred and five thousand dollars another thing to look for is consistent horses so we got a big field of 12 we have a lukewarm favorite and according to the tote board the odds anybody could have won this race then you out of all that, don't discredit consistent horses, no matter what their class level. If they've been finishing in the money, these horses are probably competitors. They they always show up. They give their best, and you can kind of rely, uh, you know, quotes, rely on them uh, for the most part. Look for horses such as, Flagstaff, such as Hall Creek Hustle, that Whitmore, that like the distance, that are distance specialists. Look for horses that like a certain track, horse for course angle. Those factors in this particular race did wonders for whoever this lucky better was that put all these pieces together. Now, I'm not saying he or she, that's what angles they use. I'm, I don't know what the thinking was. But if we're looking at it from a, a 
perspective of handicapping and betting, I think the horse for course angle, the distance specialist angle, looking for consistent horses that are in the money, all that could, you can make a case for why this particular combination came in the way it did. One last thing, though, I'd like to like to say is while this is the longest shot on the board, 46 to 1, it doesn't mean that you could not not have had that exact, uh, what did exact pay, two do, for $2, $715. All you have to do is say, all right, I'm going to try to get a big price in the second place because here's why. Most people that play trifectas, superfectas, they cast that wide net in the third and fourth spot. A lot of people, because their logical brain gets in the way, they they go with logic in the first and second position. So, like I said, Flagstaff and Whitmore, Whitmore and Flagstaff, Whitmore and Tap It to Win, the five horse, which finished second to last there. That's their logic brain. Well, you're, you, you're probably going to cash plenty of tickets, and you're probably going to cash some nice exact or, you know, Decent paying is that decent, meaning maybe over 10 bucks or something. Uh, but you're not going to have life changing scores. You're not going to like just break the bank betting like that. So you might want to spread in that second position because most people, thinking logically, will have logical horses in the first and second position. Then they spread in third and fourth position, which makes sense because anybody can finish third and fourth. But all it takes is one time you spread it in the second position and a horse that is 46 to 1 jumps up there by head, wins, and you walk out of there with $405,000 in super effective payout. All right, so think about, I'm not telling you how to bet or, or, or what to bet, but think about what are some ways that I can structure my ticket and include horses that most of the crowd ain't going to have. And if I can get lucky and come up with combinations, now remember, make a case for those horses. We made a case, a little bitty case, for 13 Lexitonia. And Tyler Gaffinell, leading last year, the leading jockey at Churchill Downs. That's another thing I didn't see at first. We made a small case for Lexitonia being in that top four. We don't have to make a big case for a 46 to 1 to include in our superfectus. Same way with Hall Creek Hustle at 31. We at 31 to 1. So it's not so much as making a case for it, including it, but I think the the reason this paid so much is because the horse finished second, not third or fourth. I I I don't have any evidence on this, but I think if number 13 won. You probably had more people had Lexitonian finish first in their super effective combination than you did second because they see that number, they see that long shot, and <laughs> it's weird like that. So you, this ticket, this outcome is very gettable, I think. You have the second highest or lowest odds horse win, and I we saw – Absolutely. There's no shocker that horse won. You had Whitmore coming in third. Heck, yeah. No no surprise at all. Whitmore always finishes up there in the money. It's just I think the key was where would you put a horse like 13? If not many people had the horse in their super effective, I'm sure they did. It's just I think the sweet spot was that second place finish for Lexitonia. The Hall Creek Hustle finishing fourth as a closer is no shock. He's a closer. He always finishes up there in the money, it seems like. And most people that play the Super Effect, especially if they don't have a large bankroll, that's where they go all, which means it includes all the horses in third or fourth spot. So that's no shocker. A long shot finishes fourth. And it's safe to assume most people playing the Super Effect will spread with many horses in that last position, the fourth position. And if not, just hit the all button, which means includes all all horses. So I think the sweet spot and the key to this this particular super effective paying what it did 
was having that long shot in the second position, not the third or fourth position. Because I think it's a whole different ball game if Whitmore could get his get his head in front of Lexingtonian, and the payout would have been significantly lower. And and who knows? He might have had a super effect to pay five thousand or something. We'll never know. But what we do know is one lucky person scooped the pool. It looks like and left. Churchill Downs are logged off their computer, $405,179.50 richer. Hopefully this video has been, well, one, entertaining. I'm not saying that, that I'm entertaining, but just the thought, just to be able to dream of having a ticket like this on one, one race is just amazing but hopefully educational. And so maybe think about when you see a payout like I did in this particular race, race 10 on Derby Day, 2021. When you see a payout like that, my Sherlock Holmes brain goes into overdrive and say, all right, this happened for a reason. Could be just random luck. But as we dwell deeper, as you, you know, I analyze it deeper. No, there's logic to this. There's some logic to this. There's no shockers. When I what you see on your screen right now, the four and nine, that that's no shocker at all. It's just that second place finish is a shocker, where it did, where where it finished in the second position. I think. So, when you see big payouts or any any race that you're like, all right, I'd like to analyze this in hindsight. And then look for clues to see if you could see why it paid the way it did. So this one, you had a big field, mild favorite. Mild favorite finished out of the money. And the horses that won made some sense. Don't have to make a lot of sense. Made some sense at the right odds. Horse for course ang angle, distance specialist, jockey and good jockeys, good trainers for the most part. And somebody is... Got somebody got paid big time. All right, enough of that. I've rambled long enough. Hopefully you stuck with me. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you hadn't already, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you can get all the latest tips, tools, and resources from Weekend Handicapper and WeekendHandicapper.com. Remember, I'll put a link to this race in the description below. And good luck to you. All the best. I sure hope you get something, something close to that in your lifetime for each and every one of you. I would love that. And I think it, it's possible. It doesn't happen all the time. It's going to take a lot of luck. But all we needed, <laughs> a lifetime score, we only needed to happen once. I mean, golly, I can't imagine what, what that would do with somebody's life. Um, if you got that, all the good you can do with it and how it can improve somebody's life. And it's certainly possible in thoroughbred horse racing every now and then. All right, so till next time, this weekend handicapper, happy handicapping and smart wagering.